All right, David, we're good? We are all good to go. Perfect. Uh, good evening and, and welcome everyone to Borough President Adams' Uniform Land Use Review Procedure Public Hearing uh, being conducted via the WebEx video conferencing platform. We have one item on the agenda this evening and please note that this virtual hearing is being recorded to comply with the public law for transparency. It will be available for viewing on Borough President Adams' One Brooklyn channel on YouTube. Viewers may join the hearing via the link and password on the following slide and request to testify via the WebEx chat function, sending your request to all panelists. Viewers may also submit comments to askeric at brooklynbp.nyc.gov for Borough President Adams' consideration. Please call the item and let's begin. Calendar item number one. 210031ZMK, 210032ZRK. These applications submitted by Almonte Lincoln LLC pursuant to sections 197C and 201 of the New York City Charter for a zoning map amendment to change the north block front of Sutter Avenue between Autumn and Lincoln Avenues from an R5 district to R6A slash C24 and a zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area coterminous with the project area. The requested actions would facilitate a five-story, 31,654-square-foot building with 28 apartments and 7,436 square feet of commercial space on the northwest corner of Lincoln and Sutter Avenues in Brooklyn Community District 5. Approximately eight units at 1377 Sutter Avenue would be permanently affordable to households earning 80% of the area median income pursuant to MIH option two. The development seller would contain 10 accessory parking spaces. Community board five has not yet taken a position on this application. Borough President Adams will hold off making any decisions until he hears from the board. We remind you again, viewers who wish to testify that you must enter your name in the WebEx chat and state your intent to speak on the application, sending it to all panelists. After the presentation and question and answer portion, we'll call speakers in order of chat requests. Would Lisa Orantia, the representative for the app this application, please state your name for the record and present the application. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Lisa Orantia, Land Use Counsel from Ackerman LLP. And thank you uh, for your time today to listen to our presentation on this application for zoning and text amendment that will allow the construction of a five-story mixed-use building on an underdeveloped lot um, at the corner of Sutter and Lincoln Avenues in East New York Community District 5. The applicant is Lincoln Almonte, LLC. And Frankie Almonte, who's joining us tonight, uh, was born and raised in Brooklyn and has been operating the Fine Fair Supermarket that is located across the street from the project area since 1993. Next slide, please. So the project area is outlined in black. It measures about 18,000 square feet along the north side of Sutter Avenue between Lincoln and Autumn Avenues. And the development site is about 8,700 square feet. It's on the eastern half of the block at the corner of Sutter and Lincoln Avenues, and it's outlined in red. The development site is used for a non-conforming beauty salon, restaurant, auto repair, and dry cleaning establishment. And the remainder of the project area is improved with three two-story residential buildings, a two-car garage, and an unlicensed parking lot. Next slide, please. The project area is located at the eastern edge of a two-story residential neighborhood. The character changes to the east of the project area due to the presence of the 3.5-acre New York City Transit Authority Pitkin Yard Maintenance Facility, the 20-story Linden Plaza and Towers Apartment Complex that's built above the rail yard, uh, the six-story Belmont Gardens Apartment Building, Gas station, car wash, convenience stores, and fast food restaurants are also to the northeast. Mixed use two story buildings exist to the west along both sides of Sutter Avenue. And a C12 overlays on the north side of Sutter allow ground floor retail uses. Uh, the AC subway line runs beneath Pitkin Avenue with, with stations at Euclid and Grant Avenues 
within a half mile of the project area. Next slide, please. Existing construction dates from 1977 and consists of a one story and a one and a half story commercial building. Um, again, these contain beauty salon, restaurant, auto repair, dry cleaners, um, and storage uses. And these commercial uses are not allowed as of right in the residential district. Lincoln and Autumn Avenues are one way streets. They're 60 feet wide and Sutter is a two way street. It's 70 feet wide. Next slide, please. This is a view looking across the street from the development site at Lincoln Towers to the southeast. Next slide, please. The development site on this photo is to the right. Um, again, looking south at Lincoln Towers. Next slide, please. The rest of Sutter Avenue block front to the west of the development site is developed with three two story, two family residences with garages. These are also within the rezoning area, but they're expected to continue lawfully after the rezoning. Next slide, please. The vacant lot on Autumn Avenue is also within the rezoning area and it's used as a parking lot. Parking lot use is not allowed as of right in the residential district. Next slide, please. The current zoning designation is on the left. It's an R5 and it's been designated R5 since 1965, but this designation is not suitable because of the existing conditions. The R5 allows residential and community facility uses as of right, but the development site is built and used for commercial uses. The R5 only allows a maximum height of four stories but across the street is the R6 district where 13 to 15 stories are allowed as of right. And one block away is the R6A, which is the same as the proposed zoning designation where six to eight story apartment buildings are typical. And the proposed condition is on the right. That's an R6A with a C24 overlay. It's a modest increase in residential floor area um, and the C24 overlay will allow uh, local retail uses. With this change, the following improvements are facilitated. New housing will be created, including affordable housing. As of right, commercial uses will be um, will replace existing non-conforming commercial uses in outmoded buildings. And the developing retail corridor along Sutter Avenue will be strengthened. So in the event um, other parcels are redeveloped within the rezoning area, the commercial overlay will allow ground floor local retail uses to extend along the entire northern block front of Sutter Avenue. Um, and these uses would be similar to uh, uh, other retail uses located on Sutter Avenue to the west of the project area that are mapped within C12 overlays. Um, existing residential uses within the project area that are not part of the development site would also be able to continue as of right under the proposed actions. And lastly, the text amendment would designate the area for mandatory inclusionary housing under options one and two. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the proposed development is a five story mixed use 31,000 square foot building. That's a 3.6 FAR. And the building will be 55 feet tall. However, the portion of the building that's located within 25 feet of an R5 district will be limited to the maximum height of 45 feet. And an eight foot side yard will be provided along the commercial ground floor uh, level. The residential component will consist of about 24,000 square feet, and it will be comprised of 28 dwelling units, eight studios, 12 one bedrooms, and eight two bedrooms. Um, and the development will include 5,000 square feet of outdoor recreation space on the roof that will be accessible to residents. The commercial area will consist of 7,400 square feet. Um, on, and it's right now divided into two ground floor retail or two ground floor retail businesses. The retail entrances will be on Sutter Avenue and there will be storefront windows along Lincoln Avenue. A uh, seller parking garage accessory to residences will um, have spaces for 10 cars. 
and sustainable features will include a solar or green roof, double glazed windows, energy efficient appliances, high efficiency water heaters, um, and air conditioning. Next slide, please. Uh, this development uh, is currently planned uh, to use MIH option 2, where at least 30% of residential floor area will be set aside for households earning 80% AMI, which means 8 units will be MIH units. And the owner will be seeking um, funding under HPD's neighborhood construction program, which requires all um, units to meet income requirements. And the owner has discussed with council member Barron a proposal to set aside 23 units for households earning 60% a AMI or lower and five units for households earning 80% AMI. And this new housing where none currently exists will provide a mix of affordable units for a range of household incomes. Next slide, please. Uh, the unit sizes will be distributed proportionally among the income tiers. We're not able to design for three bedroom units because of the footprint and the zoning of the site. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these renderings show the contacts among both the one and two family houses, as well as the Pitkin Yard maintenance facility and the Linden Plaza and Towers. Um, different materials were used to create a varied facade and windows on the rear facades avoid creating any blank walls and street wall recesses are incorporated to relate to the nearby two story buildings and that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have some questions. Um, Given the median income in community district five and local demand for deeply affordable housing, please explain why the applicant has elected to pursue MIH option two. Well, the current proposal um, contemplates option two uh, for the amount of permanently affordable housing, but we are open to evaluating whether option one would work for this project. Just also say that because you have a, a 30 year time frame um, on the other units, you would think it's a larger community benefit to have the lowest of income units being permanent. So MIH option three would actually give the best benefit in that regard, although option one at least does cover units at 40% AMI and option Two is an average of 80, which allows you to collect higher rents uh, through the MIH. So I know on the first chart, you didn't show above 80%. The second chart, you showed 100, but it does allow you up to 130% AMI. So did Council Member Barron indicate what is the highest AMI they would want to see in the building? Um. Yeah, it, it was a maximum of 80% AMI was what the council member asked for. So with option three, you can ensure that all the MIH doesn't come close to 80% AMI. And, and even with option uh, one, although it requires 40% of the affordable to be option uh, at 40% AMI, um, it doesn't preclude you from exceeding 80% AMI. So I guess the question is, what would allow you to provide a guarantee that nothing exceeds the 80% AMI um, for any of the uh, MIH uh, permanent units? Well, that's, you know, that's the commitment that we've made in our discussions with the council member. So, again, memorializing commitments is, is something to look forward to. Uh, uh, we understand. Yes. And, and what efforts have been made to utilize HPD and or HTC funding to facilitate 100% affordable housing? 
Uh, well, our intention is to use the neighborhood construction program. Um, and the owner has been in touch with HPD about using this program. Um, and this uh, would allow funding for new construction for rental housing for developments of up to 45 units. And since the zoning doesn't lock in that commitment, how would you intend to lock in such commitment? Um, you know, that's something that we're open to discussing with both your office and the council member. And I, I know you, you had a slide on this, but just to get it in the record and, and in case there's any more information for the intended affordable housing units, what's the qualifying income range for prospective households based on size? And what are the anticipated rents based on the number of bedrooms? And what is the distribution of units by bedroom size? Right, so we do um, have slides for this slide, both slide 11 and 12 are responsive to this question. Um, all units, the studio through two bedrooms would be available to households earning less than 80% AMI. Um, three units are reserved for formerly homeless, 20 units for households earning 50% AMI, and five units for 80% AMI. Thank you. And could you identify uh, what marketing strategies, such as designating one of the community's affordable housing nonprofits as the administering agent, uh, would be used in the tenant selection process to ensure the highest level of participation from community district five, uh, particularly those that are rent burdened and or at risk of display displacement? And would such a marketing strategy start off with a financial literacy campaign to help area residents become eligible for the lottery? Oh, well, we haven't selected an administering agent yet. Um, but we are open to the borough uh, presidents and the uh, and the community board's advice on Asian agents that we might select from. Thank you. There's definitely a couple that are active in uh, this section of um, community district five, and I, I think I guess uh, discussing preference with the council member probably makes sense, but. Uh, Northern area, a lot of Cypress Hills, local development corporation uh, involvement. Um, the LDC of East New York has also been involved. I'm not sure there's the nearby development that was done. It's actually two phases. So two different developers on the east side of the park. I'm not sure who they might have used because obviously it's in this area. So that, that may be something to find out. Okay. And what type of commercial tenants are envisioned for the proposed commercial space and, and what consideration might be given to accommodating local nonprofits, including arts and culture uses? Well, the intention once the building is built is to welcome back uh, one or more of the tenants that is currently using the property. Um, but again, we're, we're open to recommendations from the community as to what might be suitable for the area, what's desirable. Can you just go back on the HPD? Um, what were the income percentages that you're going to hit? Uh, for the, 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 um, the income ranges were, uh, yeah, the were percent that the income ranges that that financing would cover. Well, that program allows um, it, it's open to households earning up to 165% AMI. Right, but you had stated some numbers before in terms of what the intent was. Yes, so three units for formerly homeless, 20 units for households earning 50% AMI. So that's about 41. 1,800 to 53,700 in income, and then five right. units reserved to households earning 80% AMI, and so that would be 66,880 to 85,920. So given that, it, it would seem that MIH option one probably is a best fit, although it does require units at 40% AMI. Right. So I don't know if you have flexibility within that lending with a 20% could have some at 40 
and some at say 60 to balance or or maybe the the five at 80 percent offsets having some units at 40 percent right we'll take a look at that yeah if you could play with that with hpd i think that's a, a stronger outcome where the 80 percent is part of the mih option one and some of the 50 becomes the legally required 40 percent and then mm -hmm. uh you know balancing that figure out how many could be at 50 or uh, any other number right okay so it's a uh, yeah i think if you have five at 50 and 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 five at 40 for example you hit the 60 exactly Go ahead, Jeff. Sorry. All right, no problems. <laughs> if you leave a long enough pause, I'm going to fill it. So, so. Um, it's the borough president's policy to promote the use of renewable energy, um, focus on advancing a sustainable future in Brooklyn, and it's also his policy to promote practices to retain stormwater runoff. Uh, what consideration has been given, uh, possibly in cooperation with the DEP, the Mayor's Office of Sustainability, NYSERDA, or NYPA? Uh, to use passive house design, blue, green, or white roof coverings, solar roof and or facade panels, uh, roof mounted microgrid batteries, and DEP curbside rain gardens. Oh, well, the building will include the sustainable roofing, which is going to be either the solar roof or a green roof. Um, all the windows will be double glazed, energy efficient. Um, and all appliances will be energy efficient and the mechanical system will consist of high efficiency water heaters, electric pump and air conditioning. And all other materials will meet the 2020 New York City energy efficiency code requirements. Um, and we will we're, we're happy to cooperate with city agencies um, on on the suggestions that you've made. Well, the, the um, street frontage is, at least in the side street, the non-commercial especially, but because the sewage, the, the stormwater goes out to Jamaica Bay, looking at uh, perimeter rain gardens on the curb uh, makes sense. This is, a, you know, a sensitive area going through the 26th ward. Um, my last question is, um... It's the borough president's policy to maximize quality jobs for Brooklynites. Could you please outline what steps will be taken to ensure inclusion and participation of minority and women owned business enterprises and or local business enterprises in the construction process? Uh, well, once the general um, contractor is selected, the intention is to work with urban upbound uh, to secure as many local and minority and women owned business enterprises as part of the construction process. And I realize because you'd be getting HPD funding that they have their obligations that would come with it as well. I believe any project over a million and a half of funding uh, has some requirements through the HPD loan. Right. Anything else, Richard? No, that's okay. So just a quick reminder to viewers who wish to testify that you must enter your name in the WebEx chat to all panelists and state your intent to speak on the application. And then we'll call speakers in order of requests. Uh, Ina, do we have anyone who's requested to speak? Uh, not that I can see. All right, Richard, do you want to close the item? Calendar item number one is closed. The hearing on this item is now closed. Thank you for participating in this remote public hearing. Borough President Adams will review the application heard today and submit his recommendations to the City Planning Commission for further consideration. Uh, he'd like to take this time to remind you that the City Planning Commission will also hold a public hearing on this item, which will be announced at a later date. And the Borough President would like to remind viewers that comments can be submitted by email to ask Eric at Brooklyn BP dot nyc dot gov this hearing is now adjourned thank you thank you